So Gareth, welcome back onto the show. And we like the miners, we like gold, so we like the junior miners even more. So let's start with GDXJ. What are you seeing in this uh, chart pattern right now? Absolutely. So it's great to be back. Thank you, Bill, for having me back on. And it was a pleasure last time as well. So what I've really been happy about is the miners' performance uh, including gold and silver performance in spite of higher yields. So for those of you that have been following, we've seen yields slowly grinding up. There's been no breakout on the 10-year yet, although with the Federal Reserve meeting this Wednesday, there's always a chance of that. But generally, over the last 20 years, when yields have gone up, gold has sold off. Well, it's been different recently, right? We've seen gold holding up, which is a very bullish sign because what it tells us is that you're starting to see the worry of inflation keeping yields rising, but also keeping gold up. So I'm very bullish on the metals overall going into this kind of the next six to 12 months of the, the this year and the next year. And I think that the miners, the gold miners look great here. In fact, let me show my screen for those of you guys that can see it here. Um, the bottom line is you have the miners looking like the bull flag, the longer term bull flag is still fully intact here on the GDXJ. And bull flags are formed when you have a sharp move up like you had from last March, uh, March of 2020's low all the way to kind of July. And then you went into this consolidation period, which is basically after a sharp move. The most bullish thing you can get is kind of a digestion of that move, which is seen by sideways to slightly lower price action. And that's exactly what the GDXJ has done here. And you can even put in some trend lines for those of you guys that can see. And look at this beautiful parallel line. You can see how you can connect the high here from 2020 July to the high from um, April and May. And then if you connect the lows, it's a perfectly parallel channel. And that is about as picture perfect of a bullish pattern setup as you can get. Now, it doesn't guarantee that we're going to see the breakout in the next week or in the next month. But as long as this pattern holds, it is coming. And again, I would strongly consider as investors go, continue to accumulate miners when they dip and then look for that breakout. The breakout currently on the GDX would be right around $50. So if you push through 50, it's off to the races, probably to 65 at least. And what about for silver as a commodity? We're at about $24. What's your expectation for the remainder of the year with silver? Yeah, so silver, silver, I was a little bit more bearish on. I've kind of had struggled with silver, to be honest, because you have this whole aspect where the industrial side of silver means that if the economy starts slowing down, do you start to lose a little bit of that gusto uh, of the rising factor for like a gold or, or a platinum or, or other commodities that go up for the store of safety? When looking at the silver chart, and I'll bring up the SLV for you guys here. Silver, even with that lack of kind of full on bullishness like I am on gold, I've got to admit that the pattern continues to be very, very bullish. You can see here that if you connect this trend line, you broke below once. And what I love to see is how quickly silver got back above that trend line. So you, it looked basically it's what I would call a fake out where the big boys might have pushed silver down to make everyone think it was going to break down. And then almost within a day, it got back above that key flat trend line. And that, again, is a signal that you washed out some stops there. And now silver actually moved up beautifully and is starting to put in short term consolidation. The longer chart pattern continues to be very bullish as well. Same kind of chart pattern as GDXJ, where you're having this bullish bullish digestion period. And again, you now want to look for a breakout. And now this is on the S. LV. So understand that for those of you guys that are listening, but basically anything above 26, and we're currently at 2225 on the SLV is a major breakout where I think you could see silver moving into the 30s uh, per ounce. I mean, a very easily move into the 30s. Gareth, do you do an analysis like GDX relative to GLD or GDXJ relative to GLD? Is that part of your analysis when you're looking at the miners and the metals? I don't I don't necessarily overlap them too much, mainly because I'm very pure in my chartist nature, where I just want to look at individual charts. And I look for price pattern and time. Price would be, you know, a trend line support level, a gap fill, a double bottom. Pattern would be the bull flag that we've kind of discussed. And then the time factor is a very unique one. It's it's something that has to do with cycles. And when you get a time factor to click, it's a very bullish signal. So I really don't match them up over each other, but I do absolutely look them at, at them individually. What do you find more useful, a stock like Newmont or GLD when you're one, or sorry, GDX when you're wanting to see where the miners might go? 
I think in general, you want to look at, at the, the GDX or the GDXJ. And the main reason is because you don't have as much stock specific nature to it. So for instance, with Newmont Mining, if you compare it to you know the chart of the GLD, Newmont Mining's actually had a bad performance over the last week uh, or so coming down to its short-term lows, which actually are basically 52-week lows. Now it is holding that support, which is bullish here, um, but at the same time, gold is well off of those lows. And I think again, with Newmont, you could run into the issue of of what if a fund wants to unload a million shares that they've been holding? Does it artificially suppress the price of that individual miner versus the pure kind of GDX that's kind of spreading the risk amongst all of the miners out there that are in it? So in general, I like to look at the GDX or GDXJ for a clearer picture of the overall mining sector. And when you play the miners, do you do it via leveraged ETFs, call options, or the equities themselves? So sometimes, sometimes I'll do it really uh, all, all along all avenues. So, so there'll be instances where you know I like to tuck away for a longer term play the GLD or the GDX because those are ones where I'm just going to let them kind of sit and accumulate and and um, move higher over a longer period. So I don't like to take you know options trades or leverage ETFs if I'm not going to really focus on it too much. Leverage ETFs and options are something that are very very volatile. You need to be nimble if you're going to trade them. So, so I would just encourage everyone to understand that. Like for instance, options, we know they expire worthless. Leveraged ETFs, they all go to zero at some point in the future. So you want to be aware of that. So if you're going to tuck something away, for instance, in a 401k or an IRA, I would look to the single ETFs or a stock in particular. So you never run that risk of it just going to zero essentially. Last time we chatted, you brought up URMN as an ETF that you trade for uh, the uranium uh, play. But what about U.UN on the Toronto exchange. This is the Sprott Physical Trust, and it's actually been driving the Sprott spot price, which has been driving the uranium equities price the last couple of months. Uh, what are you seeing going on in this chart? Yeah, so I don't have this one to be able to put up. Well, actually, you know what? I can do it here. Give me a second. There we go. Um, I can throw it up on the screen here uh, from the Toronto Stock Exchange as I don't have it on my current browser or in my platform. But basically what we're seeing here is that you basically have this high pivot that was put in um, going back to, you know, it looks like a month ago or so. And then since then, we've been coming down and you're making lower highs. So you have this high pivot here and then you have a lower high here. And then you also have a lower low here as well. Well, so right now, this would be looked at as consolidation. Um, just looking at this chart, many people are going to say, okay, well, where do I buy? The answer is so simple. See all these pivot tops over here going back to kind of 11 and a half to 12 on the U.UN. That, uh, that's going to be your buy level. So right now you're trading around 14. I would begin accumulating this aggressively if it gets down to 12 or just below 12. There is just so much support there that I think that would be a beautiful setup for a pretty substantial long position.